Hello, Dr. Markovs from Tenor Schultz Clinic, and today we're talking about rotator cuff tears. It's a common thing that a lot of people with shoulder pain uh, will have, and questions pop up as far as why is my rotator cuff torn, as well as what the best treatment options going forward is. So today we're going to dive into basically all of the above, and if you have any questions, feel free to comment um, at the website, and here we go. So if we're talking about rotator cuffs, uh, the rotator cuff from anatomy standpoint is actually made up of four basic tendons. Those tendons um, attach to muscles. So four muscles help protect the shoulder. We have one up in front of the shoulder called your subscapularis. Uh, the more common one on the top part of the shoulder that goes at the top and it spans from the back to the front. That's called your supraspinatus. And then two in the back side of the shoulder, infraspinatus and your teres minor. And they sort of envelop the humeral head um, to create some stability and, and it allows the shoulder more stability and functions as a strengthened shoulder and allows it to function in multiple different directions. So one of the most common areas of the rotator cuff is your supraspinatus. So a lot of research has gone into why does supraspinatus get torn, how does it tear, and what the best treatment options for that over the years. A lot of anatomical studies. So here we're looking at actual cadaver dissection, looking at just the anatomy of the supraspinatus tendon and footprint where the muscle becomes tendon, tendon goes into the bone itself. So if we look at rotator cuff tears, so tendons that are torn and tendons that are not torn, if we look at some of the blood supply to those tendons, there's substantial reduction, almost 50% of the blood supply to that tendon um, probably relates to why the tendon's not healing properly on its own. Lots of research has been done on this topic, um, different cadaver studies, as well as live human studies, looking at just that um, blood flow to the tendon uh, on people that have torn tendons that are symptomatic, and then people that have normal tendons with, asymp with no symptoms, looking at some of those where the blood flow is the worst, um, as well as where it's the best, and trying to correlate well, why that is. In the capillary density, again, um, comparison to a normal tendon versus torn tendon, substantially reduced um, for those torn tendons. So it doesn't get the blood supply, it doesn't get the nutrients it needs to sort of maintain the tendon integrity, and that's why that tear you typically occurs. So if we're looking at um, the bone tendon muscle junction, that's an critical part of it. That's one where the blood supply is lessened as well as it's more complex from a histology standpoint because the tendon needs to heal into the bone. So that connection is very complex. And with poor blood supply, that's sure doesn't allow the body to heal as well as it should. So it needs actually that tendon grow back into the bone to sort of make sure that's as strong as possible. As well as in torn tendons, if we look at the number of stem cells in that area, it, number one has reduced blood flow, as well as that blood flow is um, not serving the stem cells. So the stem cell population that maintains that tissue has also been shown to be substantially reduced in symptomatic rotator cuff tears. This is something we've known for a long time over the last five to 10 years. Um, it also bodes well um, of why certain rotator cuff repairs tend to not take as well because they have poor blood supply as well as the tendon itself has a lower number of maintenance cells to help maintain the tendon's integrity. But the natural history of a rotator cuff tear is actually people walk around with rotator cuff tears and not even know it uh, on a daily basis. So if we look at, if we MRI a thousand people on the street, um, several hundred of those patients have torn tendons and don't even know it. So it's actually a natural um, progression as well as a natural state of normalcy that have some torn tendons and not even be painful. When about a third of the torn tendons that exist today are actually symptomatic and painful. And we find that, well, if we follow those people that are asymptomatic with a baseline of a torn tendon, that torn tendon, if it gets worsened, if we have a fall, that tear gets a little bit bigger, that's usually corresponding to when patients become symptomatic. So when patients become symptomatic, they typically, it's not that they have a new tear. It typically means they've just a bigger tear of the already existing tear to now to the point where it actually becomes symptomatic. 
And again, we follow patients long-term wise and most of those patients have tear progression, meaning um, if you have a normal uh, tendon tear, it hardly ever actually heals on its own. It either typically stays the same or gets worse over time. So if someone comes to us with a torn tendon and asks, well, is this gonna heal on its own? One, you probably had it to begin with and just got bigger. And two, there's a extremely low likelihood of the tendon actually spontaneously healing because of those two factors we already mentioned. One, it has poor blood supply and two, it has a poor number of stem cells locally. So those are things that are needed to help their tendon repair naturally and don't exist in some of those larger tears. And again, if we follow those patients long-term wise, 50% of those become symptomatic and correlate to the anatomical deterioration. There's a lot of studies and research over the last 20 years um, that sort of correlate on uh, the natural history of symptomatic and asymptomatic rotator cuff tears. So is your rotator cuff tear really causing pain or is it exists and maybe something else is creating your pain? It's a critical uh, point when some, we examine patients because just because we've seen already, we, just because you have a rotator cuff tear does not mean that's causing all of your pain. So you really need a detailed examination by the physician, your history, and then a lot of the common complaints of an actual symptomatic uh, rotator cuff tear would be a deep dull ache in the shoulder, sometimes even disturbs your sleep or you're unable to uh, lay on that side. Um, it can radiate down into your biceps area, as well as from a strength standpoint, you can start getting some weakness because that's one of your main stabilizers of your shoulder. So if that's inhibited or impaired, you start getting some dysfunctional movements of the shoulder. And if we look at, well, then from a diagnosis standpoint, we typically send you for a MRI which will show us some of the soft tissue as well, the, the bony structures. Is there any swelling in the bone? How bad is the tendon? Is the tendon still attached? Um, is it retracted? Is the muscle still um, apparent or the muscle actually atrophied? And then we can use a diagnostic ultrasound to further delineate that tendon insertion to identify where the tears are and correlate that with your examination to see if that tear is really causing a lot of your symptoms. And then treatment. So over the years, um, not a whole lot has changed from a treatment algorithm. Physical therapy is always a good place to start working on your mobility, strengthening of the shoulder, and just your, how your shoulder moves dynamically. Then there's medications and injections like corticosteroid injections, anti-inflammatory medications. Long-term wise, um, those have been shown to actually be detrimental if you continue taking those for long periods of time with repeat injections. So corticosteroid injections at high doses can actually damage and actually worsen the tear of the tendon. And ultimately, the surgical option is to try to repair the tendon. And the surgical option over the last 15 to 20 years is actually becoming a more common theme. Um, a lot more people are being operated on than ever before. Um, so these are graphs showing that disparity over the last 20, 30 years, substantially geared towards more arthroscopic uh, shoulder surgeries themselves. And again, it continues inpatient versus outpatient. Surgeons become a lot more efficient with their shoulder surgeries, so they don't need to be hospitalized. A lot of them are able to do outpatient centers, but the number, sheer number of them because of that convenience has gone up dramatically to the point 600% over, um, over a 10-year span, uh, which is dramatic. Um, before that, we weren't operating as much. Now, uh, seems to be the only thing they're doing for a lot of these tendons, mainly because there's not a better option. Um, most of these patients long-term wise failed all these conservative measures. And then the surgeon says, well, the only option at that point would be to have a surgery. But there's been a ton of evidence and research on, well, does rotator cuff surgeries actually help? Um, while the number of publications goes up dramatically over the last 20 years, the outcomes really haven't changed. Um, so there hasn't been substantial improvement in the percent of improvement, as well as the um, percent of uh, surgeries have still continued to have poor rates of um, healing and a higher rate of recaring. Um, so it's a highly studied uh, treatment, but unfortunately, a lot of publications are now showing that most of the research on the retear rates continue to be pretty high, and it's very um, a huge range. Some 
papers say 13% retail rates, others say almost a 95% retail rate. So it's a huge discrepancy. So it's usually determined on the surgeon as a surgical technique, as well as you're relying on those factors that we already know, poor blood supply and limited localized stem cells um, to try to heal the tendon. Um, the tendons can, the surgeon basically take the tendon, put it back into the bone, but that stimulus to try to repair it um, to allow that bone tendon to heal back in the bone um, sort of leads to why the retail rates can be quite high. So if we look at, again, some of the high level research studies, there's been lots of randomized controlled trials. And at the end of these trials, they still can't um, confirm or deny us um, on the efficacy and safety of, of rotator cuff surgery. And over the years, a big American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons come out with their recommendations, and they still recommend the strength of evidence for rotator cuff surgeries to be on the weaker side. And then a randomized controlled trial. So we started researching, um, are there a better way to help tendons heal without surgery? Um, enter in the world of orthobiologics, stem cells or bone marrow concentrate or platelet-rich plasma, trying to figure out, well, these things can one, improve the number of stem cells because you're adding stem cells to the local environment. And two, um, putting some platelets as well as the bone marrow treatments stimulate blood flow. So they increase the blood flow to the tendons naturally with the growth factors in the stem cells secrete some local endomatic um, signalers to actually increase the blood flow to the tendons. So ideally where the two problems that exist, why rotator cuff tears even happen, we're sort of addressing those by adding stem cells to the area and as well as um, increasing growth factors to stimulate new blood formation, blood um, blood flow, blood vessels, or what have you. So we put this to the test. We did a randomized controlled trial over the last seven years using a combination of bone marrow concentrate, which houses your stem cells and platelet products um, that have various growth factors to stimulate that blood flow. And we followed them for long-term. And one of the great things we found that almost 89 point something percent of those patients got substantially better to the point where they didn't think about their shoulder, they're able to live their life, and they were very happy with the results. And then we saw imaging wise. Um, another question is, yes, it helps symptomatically, but can it reverse some of the disease processes in the shoulder? And that actually um, is the answer is yes. We've seen reversal and healing of the tendon tears themselves. So well, naturally tendons don't heal on their own. We're showing quite consistently that we're showing some healing of the tendons. These are MRI images. Uh, from one of those patients where they had a pretty big symptomatic rotator cuff tear that's full of swelling. We treated them and several uh, months after treatment, patient continued physical therapy, started strengthening the shoulder and lo and behold, the updated imaging actually shows healing of the tendon. Not 100%, but probably about 80, 90% of the uh, tendon is healed, um, which again, doesn't happen naturally. And here at Centennial Schultz Clinic, we're sort of the, the worldwide leaders in orthobiologics. So stem cells, bone marrow contract, PRP, we continuously do all the research and publications. Uh, all of our physicians, myself included, our authors um, publish multiple papers uh, on a yearly basis, and as well as give talks, train physicians on how to do these type of injections. If you're wondering if you're a candidate for any of these types of treatments for any shoulder pain, um, feel free to give us a call. We're happy to evaluate you and see if you're a candidate for any of these state-of-the-art treatments. Thank you. Have a good day.